A retro cut there, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Don't believe a word. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Bubba doo boo, <laughs> who's that over there? <laughs> it's Carly Pilk Boys. <laughs> You right, oh, come? That's How are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah, come on, up, 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 bigger bag doo Up, 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 yeah? Project, project. There's people out there wanting to, you know, cheer up their Saturday afternoon. We're the boys for it, yeah? yeah. We're like quick, quick fitters. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Alright, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Come on! Come I'm on! Right, I'm alright, I'm up for it. That's it, this is the height of excitement. This is it, is it? That's this how is you, you when you're This is you off your head, is it? High on life. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what did Suzanne say about you saying about a big ass? Uh, Go on. Should, should about it. Should we recap yeah. what happened last week? Well, the week before, he he uh, said that um, her haircut looked like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> she didn't like that. So next week I said she was a bit grumpy. He went, yeah. I didn't mention her fat ass. <laughs> Still thinking that she she would never hear about this. Yeah. What happened when you went home? Um, she heard about that off a mate. Yeah. And we sorted it out. Didn't have to buy her anything. I just just sort of said, come on, you know what the show's about and that. Stop yeah. moaning, yeah. right? That was all right until about Thursday, when I was reading about, uh, do you know, like they say, there's, there's, like, two worlds and that, and, uh, whatever I'm doing now here, there's another one of me doing the same. Yeah. But- Well, no, but he's probably taking some time off. <laughs> he's probably having a week off. Yeah. But, Go on. but I was just talking about that, and she was saying, nah, that, that doesn't happen. And I sort of said, well, they definitely won't have a haircut like yours. <laughs> Right. That, that sort of started the, yeah. the argument again. It's almost like you haven't learnt your lesson. Also, it's like you're talking about it again on air almost, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> so it makes clear again. It's well, very short sure learning again, curve. Sure you, know, again. you know, Carl, if there was a- uh, if I cut a hole in a- in a box and you knew there was an orange in there, right, and you put your hand in, would you be stuck there trying to get that orange out, do you think? Or would you just like let it go and sort of tip upside down to get it out? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers your question. Is that a cardboard box on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any other things you want to criticise Suzanne for while we're on air? Anything else? Anything that's been niggling that you thought you should get off your chest? Uh, the hair, the arse. Nah, leave no, it. Everything leave else it. is yeah, fine. Leave, leave it. it. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's good. I good. think leave it. Well good. done. Now, can we just check what uh, other big Carl features have we got today? We got uh, Monkey News. Got Monkey News That's coming important. on, yeah. yeah. Got a bit of, uh, got Rockbusters. Uh -huh. And, uh, the film thing that, uh, <laughs> Still not got a name. <laughs> yeah. The film thing. Just, just me and a film and that. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Brilliant. This week, we're digging out the old, uh, the one, when I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right, so you're gonna make Jack an Jack Nicholson. Appearance. Brilliant film. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant film. It was my favourite film till I saw Godfather. It's better than that. Well, you know, yeah, some would say that, yeah. No, it is. The, the storyline's more interesting than I that. I didn't know there was an actual answer. I didn't- <laughs> so, sorry, it's what's best? One floor of the cuckoo's Is it? Okay. Oh, fact, Rick. oh, right. Okay. Where's- where's Godfather? Because I want to know, because I don't embarrass myself. Or uh, is it my fourth favourite film or something, or? Probably about <laughs> fifth. In my fifth favourite film, is it? Brilliant. Talking of lists- I suppose Rick. I like Kez and the Elephant Man, do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> lists, yeah. Rick. I don't know if you saw in the paper. I think it's on TV this evening. It's, uh as voted for by viewers of VH1, yeah. the music channel, yeah. and they've basically come up with a list of the greatest pop culture icons, uh, ever. Uh, there's a hundred. In Where's Central. Elvis? So Elvis, is, for instance, is number three. Jimmy Dean in there? James Dean is in there, I think he's a bit lower. Uh, let me see, he's, uh, number twenty-two, twenty-two. We got David Beckham at number one. Oh, well, okay, well then, so, Robbie Williams is in there, so, so it's, it's British bias. Yeah, Robbie Williams is number nine, he's just, uh, just a below ABBA. Oh, okay. Eight. But, mm -hmm. um, interestingly, this is of interest to you, I think, number 66. Yeah. The Office. That's all right. Well, uh, it is, Rick. It's nice that the show is in there and that. Yeah. That's a very flattering thing. I'll tell you what cheapens it. I'll tell you what undermines it. Yeah. The things that are lower in the list than the show. Oh, God. So we've beaten. Well, Go I'll on. give you a little test. Yeah. Higher or lower? Do you think this is higher, near the top of most important pop culture icons or lower than ours? Okay, I'm gonna give you, uh, Superman. Well, uh, international, been around since the 30s, one of mm -hmm. the biggest icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. I'll say higher. Lower. But, yeah. Ludicrous. <laughs> okay. Do you think higher so... or lower? <laughs> Neil Armstrong, the first man <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> this guy's been to the moon. <laughs> well, I'd say, uh, I'd say lower then. Lower? Yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah, but is, is that saying the people behind 
the rocket or just him? <laughs> because he just sat in it, didn't he? He just sat there, yeah, he didn't do anything. But, no, but, but it's, it's the icon. It's what he's symbolic not, of. It's, yeah, it's not what, how much work went into it. Alright. Uh, a few others. What about things like Coca-Cola? Oh, no, they don't really count. It tends to be- uh, Oh, so it's not- They don't feature. I mean, Mickey Mouse is in there. Um, mm. what do you make- what do you reckon, Tom Cruise, higher or lower? Tom Cruise is the number one box office movie star in the world. <laughs> well, presumably lower, He's then. lower. He's number 81. <laughs> yeah. Just about scraped in there. Uh, it really is a list drawn up by people who've just sat at home and looked along their video and book collection. Yeah. Um, office, well, yeah, that's good. Well, I think it is a reflection of that, but it's- it's always the same that they, um, you do an HMV poll and it's pet sounds, uh, revolver, let's get it on. Yeah. Robbie Williams, live through a lens. <laughs> exactly. Because it's, it's, you know, it's the people that vote, it's a reflection of like those massive, you yeah. know, what's big at the moment. I was the most powerful man in comedy, let's not forget. Yes. One year ago. Yeah. Wonder where I'll be this year. See, if that had been the laziest man in comedy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'd have got my vote. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly though, at number 26, Carl <laughs> Pilkington. <laughs> Oh, imagine. Oh. All possibilities. Badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and little Carly Pilkoids. <laughs> Rick, um, Susie's emailed. Yeah. She wondered if you could give a massive hello to yeah. uh, Hannah and Charlotte and all in the sixth form at Cobthorpe School. Yeah. She's on to listen. Would you give them a massive yeah, hello? Yeah, shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah no massive. Respect, man. Where are they from? Uh, I don't know. I can't quite pronounce it. Cobthorpe School? Cobthorpe or? Massive. Yeah. They're Cop probably known as. Yeah. yeah. So good luck to Sue's and Hans and Charles. When did we, when did we start doing dedications? I feel we should, like, because I've always felt there's just something that's lacking on the show. Interaction with the audience, you know? Interesting only to the one person whose yeah, name is mentioned. Yeah, of course, But yeah. that's how, that's how proper DJs fill out their time. They don't talk about monkeys and, you know, and all that kind of drivel. Oh. Do you think monkeys are drivel, Carl? Well, 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 we'll still be doing a bit of monkey news. It doesn't yeah, matter how, yeah. how much you have a pop at it. It's coming up in a bit. Yeah. Got some good stuff this week. Yeah, I, know, I know it's been a bit dull. Yeah. Last two weeks. Well, know? no, it's not been dull. It's been totally untrue. <laughs> As ever. Bordering what? on the impossible. I mean, monkey dating, saying what tree are we meeting in? Mm, no. You believe that sort of drivel. Mm. So, I mean, oh, oh, God. Jonathan Ross told a story about a chimpanzee once. Go on. It was about, <laughs> but it was about how it escaped from the zoo yeah. and it jumped on a bus. Right. Okay. Interesting. Funny. I right? did that one. But it possible is there possibility in that yeah, one but being I did true? That. I did that one. I think you said something like he drove the bus or he was conducting it. Or I think fares. you said he took it to Spain. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see the difference? It's that little stretch of credibility that means it's all shite. How is Jonathan Ross? All right. <laughs> is he? I wondered how long it would take before his name popped up. How is he? How is the old man? Oh. Looking forward to his birthday Monday. Oh dear. Yeah. I don't know if any of the listeners uh, oh. saw Ricky on Jonathan Ross's TV show last night. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, man alive. What? Well, that's not an interview. How is that an interview? What? It's not, he wasn't interviewing you, he's like two pals just having a laugh. And well, if we ha- it was like it was a family do, <laughs> and you just happened to film it and stick it on the telly. <laughs> My friend made a good point, it was like any minute his kids were gonna pop out, sit on that sofa next to you and go, Oh, Uncle Ricky, do, a, do the little dance. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable, I mean, uh, what were you wearing for uh, a start? Uh, oh! What's that? Some tatty old jumper like you've just been doing some R-texting and you've gone pot round with it, we're having a couple of drinks. That's, that was Lambretta. Lambretta. Was it trendy, inside out? Trendy jumper. How, how do you keep that, getting things with the St. George Cross on it? That, what do you mean? I've, that's the only one I've you've got. You've got loads of stuff. T-shirts, jumpers, shoes. No, I've got a union jack. pants. Jacket, um, uh, uh, a what's it? A French connection one? But that's one. not the- that's not my underpants. concern. Underpants! I haven't got any underpants! That's not my concern, no. It's but, just the fact that, I mean, firstly- Yeah. The fact that Ricky, for those of you who don't realise, Ricky is friends with Jonathan Ross. They are friends. Now, they've only known each other, what, a year maybe? About two, yeah. It's less, I think it's less than two. And what worries me is, you're, the friendship's too close. What do you because mean? Because you're, you're over 40. You see, it seems to me that like after the age of 25, <laughs> men should not be becoming really close friends with other men. It should be like, you've had all your friends, you made them at university, at school, 
And if you were in a way you walk of life and you met someone at a party or a pub, even if you got on, you would not be phoning them every other day, like going to an awards. What are you wearing, Jonathan? I've heard this conversation. What are you wearing? I think I might wear this. Is it too formal? Is that going to be too formal? It's not true. It is. That's you're not always true. on the phone to him. You're always chatting. I'm just going to pop around. Oh, I'm just going to play some tennis. But yeah, we play tennis. Always hanging out with the guy, and it's it's to me it's unhealthy. And this. It's just bled over now onto oh, TV. I, oh, hold on, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, you're there, it's like, I'll tell you what you reminded me of, Des O'Connor and Jethro. <laughs> coming on to oh, Pergie's live oh, video. Oh, oh, Tommy and Kenny Lynch. And then at the end of the interview, after yeah. they've been, you know, mutually yeah. backslapping. Yeah. He, he gave you a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Ross gave <laughs> you a cat <laughs> as a replacement for your cat which died. Yeah. Now to me, but that's an, that's an inappropriate gift. Why? It's a times. lovely gift. It's it's a the, you should be, I don't think people should be giving pets do you know, gifts. Do you know what I've got in there for his birthday? Imagine up to a wedding with, <laughs> I just bought you a cat. Oh, do you know what I've got in for his birthday? I, I was asking him, I've got him a child. Well, you may as well, because that's what it's like, a cat to me. I've got a small Rwandan child. A cat to me is like, I've, I've bought you this small child. <laughs> I was gonna sponsor him, but I got a bit of cash, I've flown him over. <laughs> It it's was too, a it's just, too intimate, it's, you know like, it's too I much think? responsibility. Do you know what I think, Carl? Go on. I think Steve's a bit jealous. I'll tell you, I've got good reason to be jealous. What? I've got good reason to be jealous, I just remembered this. Your birthday, yeah. Jonathan Ross was there. Carl Pilkington was there. Yeah. I don't remember being invited. <laughs> I don't remember being invited. Was I there, Carl? You were there, I don't remember being yeah, there. Yeah, but you're with him all day, and that. Right, so, okay, well, yeah, but he sees you a lot. I mean, Jonathan, he's on, he's round his house every other day playing tennis, and who else knows what, swimming together and sat in his jacuzzi, <laughs> cracking wise. What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> oh, we've got to the bottom of it. Play a record. The villa that we went to afterwards yeah. could only sleep six. It may as well have been. <laughs> How is the cat? All right. Yeah, What's yeah. He, what have you named it? Jonathan? Ollie. Hey ya! Outcast, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's that time, isn't it? <laughs> Rockbusters. Three. Come on, Carl, what you got for us? Alright, well, some... do, uh, do you want to say what the prizes actually, are? The prizes are better than that. Really? Um, we've got, I'll uh, be the judge of that. Actually, I'm, what am I talking about? No, there's a two disc set, Rock and Roll Legends, on the cover there. We've got Buddy Holly, Elvis, Roy Orbison. And uh, little Richard. So no that's... one wants that. Really. <laughs> Nobody's interested. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, a DVD. I'm a Nick Cave fan, and I wouldn't watch it. No, you'd watch it once yeah, at most when there was nothing on. No, me knowing you. No, 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 I mean, Nick Cave's good, but when do you watch rock exactly. people DVDs? Yeah. No, me knowing you, great series, obviously. But once VHS. Again, on VHS. Who wants it on VHS? Where, yeah. where are all the bonus features? R r absolute pointless. The only so thing far. that's half decent is this enormous hardback League of Gentlemen book, which is the scripts and all sorts of other stuff. If you're a League of Gentlemen fan, you'll love it. If you're not. I guess it's a good if, Christmas. If gift. you're not a League of Gentlemen, there's nothing in this for you. <laughs> no, exactly. So, <laughs> so you know, you can okay, either enter for the hell of it. A pile of rubbish. What's the sh well, not as bad as the competition, I suppose. So, no. go right, on. Well, you, you know how it works. Cryptic clue. It's not really cryptic. It's well, usually wrong. It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So the first one, there's three of them. You get them right. You win the stuff. First mm. one. Uh, I'll get them close. I mean, because <laughs> you could win this if you got one right, possibly. If you go to Chepstow, you will. Was that a clue or is that a point? Is that something? That's, that's a clue. Right. right. Say right. it again. If you go to Chepstow, you will. And what are the initials? Just S. Just S. Right. Second one. Um, e. T. is upset. What's up with him? <laughs> <laughs> All right. E. T. is upset. What, what, what's it upset for? What's wrong with him? All right. Different. <laughs> so not cryptic. So M go on. E. The initials there. N E. M. M E. M for mother. M E. All right. And the third one, um, I had a, I had a tape with, uh... Jesus. <laughs> imagine Bob, down, imagine Bob. Bob, Hol Bob Holness doing oh, yeah. this against, in the gold run, oh, no. against the clock. Right, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I had a tape, no, I had a tape with some, uh, <laughs> I had a, oh, listen, I had a tape with, like, yeah. Umpty Dumpty on it, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and Ickery Dickery Dock and that on yeah. it, but I have broke it. Alright. Um. Constantly listening to it, trying to figure them out. <laughs> trying to solve the crime. <laughs> exactly. Who pushed Humpty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The initials there, B R. Right? So, first one, if you go to Cheps though, you will. The initial there, uh, S. E.T.'s, uh, E.T.'s upset. What's up with him? Yeah. Right, what's up with E.T.? I don't know. What's up with E.T.? E.T.'s upset. What's up with E.T.? <laughs> yeah. 
The initials there, M E. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go through that one more time. Yeah. If you go to Chepstow, They're you like might. They're like jazz uh, questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just free for exactly. Yeah, yeah. E T's a bit upset. What's gay? <laughs> what's that? What? Hey, dude. What's the matter, man? <laughs> and they had a tape with like Umpty Dumpty on it, Ickery Dickery Dock stuff yeah. like that. Doesn't work anymore. What's what's gone on there? Right? <laughs> what's gone on there? B R. First time we said, well, you broke it. Well, I, bro I broke it then. Yeah, Is that important matter. or not? Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. And right. so it's B? B R. Okay. Right. Okay, well you can text if you have uh, a <laughs> mobile phone, so everyone, there's no excuse to not take part. 83XFM is the text, 83XFM. I think phone number, no, not the phone, obviously. I think I know what the B might stand for. Um. <laughs> and, uh, otherwise it's, uh, ricky.gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> no. uh, We'd love uh, to hear from you. Oh, it just sucks the life out of me, does, rock, rock, just listening to Rockbusters. Something to bring you down even further, although it's a beautiful, beautiful tune. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Ryan Adams has got a number of different albums out at the moment. One is called Rock and Roll. It's not great, don't really bother with that one. Do dig out, though, Love is Hell Part 1 from Ryan Adams. It's available uh, at different places, and you'll find this on it. Track 5, Wonderwall, his version of Oasis. Absolutely is wonderful. beautiful, isn't it? It's a treat. It's XFM 104.9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortune Faded Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. You, oh. of course, um, don't ever take the tube anywhere, Rick. No. You haven't done that for years. No. Um, take cars everywhere or you walk. Yeah. Or you get a lift from Jonathan. Um, but me, I'm still forced to take the tube, which is also very embarrassing at the moment. You're not forced posters. to take the tube, are you? I am. What do you mean you're what, forced What, am I made of money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could How walk. else am I going to get about? You could walk. What? You can you can drive. Why don't you buy a car? Oh yeah, driving into the centre of town. Congestion charge. Are you paying that? Are you a fiver? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you think of that, Carl? <laughs> hey. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, oh yeah, because he's Mister uh, Flush. He's Mister Lavish with his cash. No, I've, I've, I've moved in closer, I? I'm not moaning about it. I walk everywhere yeah. now. Well, good. Yeah. I'm pleased about for you. It. Yeah. I'm, I'm only about it, but then I sorted it out. But you're yeah. always whinging anyway. Let's not get on to you, Carl. It's mm, always you, you, you. Yeah. So, um... What's up with Steve today, do you think, Carl? I don't know, what's going on? He's having a go, isn't he? Yeah. It's not yeah. helping those posters being on the tube of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping. I don't know if you've seen those posters. You'd obviously don't go anywhere. I, saw, seen I saw the, saw the, yeah. I haven't seen like, on the tube, but... Everywhere I go, I'm stood next to one. I can't avoid it. Yeah. I'm on the tube waiting. I look around and I oh, it's, it's us again. And it's so embarrassing. Well, it makes, because it looks like you're stood next to it deliberately. But I can't browse in HMV now. I went yeah. last week and uh, you keep coming up to pictures or cardboard cutouts of yeah. Brent. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in a bookshop and I was looking at there's a big almanac of comedy, right? And I was just looking through it, just browsing, right, killing time. And there was a picture of me. And just as I started looking at this right up at the office, a tap on the shoulder, it was one of the worst there, said, do you mind signing some script books? Mm. So she saw me looking at myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I wanted to go, you know, I just, you know, I just turned to that page then. Yeah, I was in a bookshop looking, there was a big book on, uh, sit sitcoms, it was like the A to Z of sitcoms or something like that, and I genuinely was looking up other shows, because it was about other yeah, comedy so shows. Like, yeah. And I was looking something up, guy that I knew came up to me, like that, oh, and I just started to like, oh, I'm just looking, oh, Robin's Nest, where's that? Yeah. Birds of a feather, I just got to Cause yeah. it's so, it's like, I'm interested in comedy before yeah. the fact I got in comedy, so I well, will buy a book on comedy. Exactly, yeah. But on the tube it's really awkward because it's like, um, it, it's, everywhere I walk they're kind of around the corner so you don't sort of expect them and then I'm sort of running now from kind of corridor to corridor, pillar to pillar, <laughs> to avoid being stood next to this picture. Yeah. In case I look like someone who stands next to this picture trying to get recognised. <laughs> Imagine that! Um, oh, of course Carl didn't want his little round bald head. No. On that. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I was on the tube today and, um, <laughs> you know, you, sometimes you can't help but overhear a conversation. Yeah. And, uh, this one woman, there were two friends, they were sat there, and one woman said, um, she just said, uh, oh, I must tell you this, I must tell you this. <laughs> I was in the pub last night and, uh, Dave called and I said, Dave, he said, I can't hear you. I said, Dave, it's not, I said, he said, I can't hear you. So I held the phone up so he could hear all the noise in the pub. Oh. That was it. That was the anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> that was the story. And I wanted to lean over to her friend and say, unless this woman has given you a kidney or saved you from drowning, yeah. do not be friends with her. Break up this friendship. She hasn't got anecdotes. Because what's that? And I've, I've got acquaintances like that where you know you, sp you speak to me, get cornered at a party, you know this is the person who has not got anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. The anecdotes, they're not stories. <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah. that's it. It's like you're expecting for something else to happen. Uh, Never yeah. does. Well, I was, um, with, uh, 
Danny Baker yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. brilliant bloke. Guy, uh, first yeah. time I met him, and we got on like a house on fire. Put your num- oh. his number straight in your mobile. Well, we've exchanged numbers, because yeah. he's got some great anecdotes. You had to delete mine, because you no, know, you've got, got so I'm many. Right, I'm right, right with him, because he's, he's funny, he did sure. this thing, and it was absolutely brilliant. He's yeah. doing a, uh, he wrote, uh, uh, a documentary, and, uh, he's a great guy. He's a f- he's funny as well, you know Show- what I mean? It's this- I'll tell you what it is, it's the <laughs> showbiz friendship. <laughs> That's what I loathe, I think. It's the fact that, like, somehow, you're sort of- you, because it's like you haven't got to go through the formalities <laughs> of making friends with someone, because they- oh, well, I respect your work, you respect mine, you know I'm a funny guy, you've seen my work. Yeah. Let's be friends. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And it's like- and it just- it's a horrible, kind of, icky, sort of- Listen, Steve, me and you are gonna stay in touch, whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, not- and probably not my birthday this year, but next year- Sure. We've known each other, what? Seven, eight years. Yeah. So, come to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, can I- I'll Do I need what? to wear the waiter's outfit again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, dear. P-I-M-P, by 50 Cent, or 50 Cent, as I call him. XFN 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve Merchant, there's little Carl Pilkingbod over there. All right? All right. Yeah. yeah, not bad, not bad. Listen, um... Oh, he's perked up. Yeah. Oh, he's back in the area. Well, you got something to no, say? I just, just, I was kept quiet in the first hour. I'll let you get on with it. No, what you got to say? Is it, just, don't have a guess, is it about monkeys, Chinese people, or little gay fellas? It's about, it's about little gay fellas. Sure. Is it? Of course yeah. it is. Go on. Yeah, but not because, I'd like, I like Sorry, to just make a that. tally, let me just note that, don't yeah. you? Yeah. No, no, but it fascinates me, doesn't it? All stuff like that, that's sure. a bit, sort of different. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. What, you were like, showing me. like monkeys and Chinese people? Well, and... That thing you were showing me before, the half woman. No, half you weren't. In, you weren't impressed with that. Well, no. You're that woman be. that's got two uh, g- pieces of uh, genetic makeup in her, where it was two, um, two separate sperms and two um, separate eggs um, fused, and she came out as sort of a, a normal person, but she had this residue of genetic material, yep. and so she's had two children that aren't genetically the same as her. Yeah. Right. And they showed it in the paper by doing her half white and half black to show the two different- you know what I mean, just for- yes. he went, it, does she look like that? I said, of course not, he went, not interested then. Of course. Yeah. If, he said, how could I tell? Not interested <laughs> in that at all. Yeah. If I'd have said she'd given birth to a monkey, mm. fascinated, <laughs> yeah. straight yeah. away. Well, anyway. Go on. But that's what I'm saying, I'm just interested in weird stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so about, am I. That's why little, you're on the show. Talking about little gay fellas and that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Northern Line, the ch- underground tube thing. Not train. the not the boy band, right? right. Yeah. Um, apparently, on a uh, on a Saturday night late. I don't know what that is. Uh, if it, what 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 time late is in the sort of gay community, as mm. we've discussed before. Mm. Yeah. But apparently, the last carriage on the Northern Line, they all they all get in there. What do you mean they all get in there? They sort of take over. The last carriage of the Northern Line on a Saturday night, right? And it's like the gay, the gay carriage, right? And what exactly do they do? They just travel about on the Northern Line. No, just have a chat and that, and like uh, just you stick know, on the communards. How do you How do you know? Someone tell me. See this? I I mean, I'm glad you've informed me because it wouldn't bother me, but I feel I should be told about these things because I'm likely to stumble onto that carriage. Mm. By mistake, and I'm not. It's not that it'd be a problem. It's just I might feel a little uncomfortable if there's a lot of people in, you know, the black, <laughs> the black leather gear and the moustaches, the hats. I mean, to be quite honest, they'd be annoyed. Of course, because they'd be expecting something a little bit, you know. What do you mean? Well, they're good looking, most of them. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are good looking fellas, though, aren't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're just a, a lot of the gay, you know, they look after themselves and yeah. that and look good. Keep but themselves. Some of them know. work out, yeah. yeah. You see, this is the, the problem I have because there's a lot of areas in London and elsewhere in the country where there's a sort of, you know, it's a gay thing, you know, it's a gay public toilet, or, or I don't mean it's gay, but it's not like a legal thing. It means a cottage. But it's a cottage, or whatever. I mean, I remember being, um, in Bristol once doing something. <laughs> You're confused when I said it's a cottage. Yeah. That's a term for where gay people go in toilets to sort of meet and greet each other. Well, I, I, uh. Shake hands. <laughs> I was at uh, the public library in Bristol once doing some studies from a sixth form, mm. and um, I think the toilet was closed in the library. I was dying for the toilet, and I popped out, and there was a public toilet behind the library. I thought, I can't believe my luck. Dashed down there. It was about six ish in the evening. I was working yeah. late. I was studying hard. Yeah. I went in there, and I swear to God, I saw two fellas with the. Is that, is that unusual? Or? Uh, well, no, that they were up to some hijinks. What, what they sort of like. Do you what? know the thing that struck me? What? One of them had bright red underpants. 
What do you mean? You saw, what, they were trans- actually doing, you know, they were having some kind of, you know, well, they were having relations. They weren't even in a cubicle, they were out in the- Where, where were the underpants? Well, where around the- his ankles. No! Yes! I swear to God, I'm not gonna make this up! <laughs> what old were you? I don't know, like, how old you are in the sixth form? Sixteen or whatever? Yeah, 17? and what did you do? Well, I actually what, said- Well, you just joined in, what else did you do? You <laughs> might as well, I yeah. actually swore, I said, oh, F me. And then I went, oh, no, <laughs> <don't."> <laughs> No, I did, I swear to God. I did, I did. <laughs> I went, oh, F me. No, don't. Because I was panicked and I ran out. And I, as I was, and as I was walking out, a guy was coming in. I went, oh, hang on, mate. And then I thought, I better not tell him. I, I, I let him find out for himself. He might be going there to join in. He might have got a call. Come down. We're having, we're going crazy on each other's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Come down. And it's conspiracy in Bristol. But what conspiracy. annoyed me, what annoyed right, me my was, lover. What a bit of cart. <laughs> what angered me, Rick, was, uh, was the fact that. I wasn't notified that there was not. I didn't know there this was, was no a, sign. And afterwards, I spoke to other people about it, and they said, "Oh, it's a famous gay haunt." But mm. what annoys me is, I feel that they should put an ad in the local press, yeah. a big paper, like once a week, like you know, when they recall cars if they're damaged or, or there's a fault, or curries might bring back stuff if they're sort of faulty goods. They say recall and we'll give you money back. They what do you put suggest? An ad in. The gay community should put an ad in that just says, "These are the hot spots. This is where you're likely to find us doing some stuff. If you're not gay, and you might feel uncomfortable. Avoid them and just list them or little pictures or you know a map or something, anything. Because like the gay tube thing, I Cock don't know. Fun. One, two, three railway cuttings. <laughs> Well, not that. It's more of a kind of. It's more of a sort of social awareness thing. Yeah. So people, you know, don't feel uncomfortable and. But they don't want it exactly to be like sort of walking <laughs> under a neon sign. But why? It's, it's legal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big arrows. <laughs> oh, as if. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? Because. Well, it's actually a public place. I don't think. It, I don't think cottage is well, strictly I legal. But, but even if it's specify what they're going to do. But some people, some people, they're not, some of them aren't, I don't think it's but probably seen gays, is it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, but it's not the people that go out and they say I'm gay and I like Barbara Streisand. It's presumably the sort of people that do that are people that either aren't quite out yet or, do you know what I mean? Or they're, they're, they're doing having a quick one over the way to their wife and kids. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know completely how it works, but I'm sure there probably isn't a place like, um, uh, free bumming here tonight. <laughs> no, there is kind of. What? Because I, I was walking home one night through Soho, right? Mm. Um, just cause that's the way I have to go, not cause I choose, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't going there on that, right? So I'm, I'm walking <laughs> so no, through, really, right? On. And, um, I was handed like a, a card, which was like a gay event, yeah. right? Now that's a bit weird, isn't it? That straight away he's presuming that because I'm there that time of night. Well, and you've got a shaved head and you sort of like, you know, you sort of like quite look after yourself and you've got some nice clothes. Yeah, but it's still, you, and you, you look can't like really a little presume. bit rough, don't you, from Manchester? It was you, a, look like, you look like a northern rent boy who comes down well, to well, stand outside McDonald's. But and the card was rubbish, right? What do you mean? Had this fella on it, yeah. right? All sort of greased up and that. Why would you look? Just <laughs> having a look. What, what you'd handed me in that? Sure. Right. Just having a look. A uh, picture of him, sort of sailor's hat on, tan body, like, just his arse out, like that. <laughs> and, uh, rubbish slogan, right? The best bum in W1. <laughs> <laughs> is this bum there a noun or, like, a verb? What do you mean? Well, to bum. Is it, like, get the best bum you've ever had? Or, he had the best bum? I think it's just I don't suppose you asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you called the number to check. <laughs> what do you mean exactly by this? Does it mean you've got a great arse? Do you I mean I will good. be well bummed, or do you mean all you've right, just got right, a good- Come on now, let's-, let's Well, just a final point about- cause I asked my friend how it all works up on the Heath, cause I live in Hampstead Heath, yeah. uh, near Hampstead, and I was where I didn't want to go walk in and get involved, mm. get myself involved in it. <laughs> how can you get involved? No, but again, I didn't want to walk- So like, by. is it like, oh, I yeah, not believe it, I, I couldn't say no. <laughs> oh, my wrist, it's knackered. What do you mean, well, I was there for about two hours, I must have gone about 43 of them. <laughs> but you know, I didn't like to say no, cause they were just, they were so pleased to see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, God. Well, it's not so much the fear of that. It's not, it's not Good skiing practice. I was doing two at a time for a little <laughs> it's while. It's not the fear of that so much <laughs> as the fact that, again, you don't want to gate crash someone else's party. You do, do you know what I mean? No. You don't, if, so, if, there, if there was a straight couple having sex, you'd want, oh, I'm sorry, and you'd want to avoid that area. You, yeah, you, of course. But I find, so someone told me, and someone told me how, they, how it works, and apparently you just go and you like, sit on a bench or something, and yeah. then a guy just sits on the bench and they just look at each other. There's not really anything said. It's just a kind of nice evening or whatever. You know, I guess it's like two in the morning or whatever. And then they go off in the bushes and ding dong. <laughs> but I, it's like I don't know how that culture's developed. This is, it's, I love this program. But now. why can't that be the case with women? 
that would be amazing. You just go out to the park <laughs> at one in the morning. You just sit on a bench. You just be like a yeah. scene from Gigi. Exactly. Where they, yeah, just walking along with the perambulator. Yeah. Uh, oh. Exactly. You, but that would just be a joy if there was none of this formality. You've got to talk to them, buy them dinner. Oh, you know, you're joking. Romance. Oh no. Just this kind of informal thing. It'd so be what, great. So what do you? What would you? What would you do then? You go up to a woman and go, "Come on." Yeah. Let's let's stop mucking around. We know there's why a, we're both sat on this bench. There's a there's a nice. There's a nice bush over there. Yeah. Let's have a bit. Yeah, and then she'd go, yeah, great, thanks, I'm, you know, I'm killing some time before I, you know, pop into Tang. Yeah. That'd be perfect, thanks. You make my weekend. So you're jealous of gays as well in as me? In a sense. In a way. What do you think, Carl? Let's put a track on. Why? You're getting it's scared the, now. Yeah. You pulled it up. Is, is, it, you, is it getting too close to the bone, so to speak? <laughs> Radiohead and There There on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I was talking to my dad the other day. He was saying he, he lived in Bristol and my family live in Bristol and so they can't really listen to the show. And um, he uh, he said, I was thinking of buying your uh, grandparents a digital radio for Christmas so they can Brilliant. listen to uh, listen to your show. Imagine them listening to that last link. <laughs> About you. And then me seeing them at Christmas. Steve, you never told us you saw two blokes bumming. Yeah, and then what was... <laughs> What's that about you jacking off 30 men? <laughs> exactly. You've got to say no, lad. <laughs> I know you're a nice fella, but just because they want relief, you're not the man for it. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. You must be so proud. Yeah. Rockbusters. You had a bit of love in this, all right? <laughs> 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 uh, three clues were, uh, first one. If you go to Chepstow, you will, right? The initial was S. That was C horses. All right. That was the answer there. I'll give you that. That's fair enough. enough. I'll give you that. Um, E.T.'s upset. What's wrong with E.T.? What's, what's, what's wrong with him? Yeah, right. Initials M.E. Yeah. What's up with him? He was Missy Elliot. All right, Elliot. Doesn't who's, count at all. What? Doesn't count at all. Missy Elliot. You know what I mean? What's up, what's, what's wrong with E.T.? Well, what, what is that with him? No, no, well, well, just let him explain it. Sorry, Carl, do it again. Well, well, I wasn't listening. Do it again. Elliot, yeah. Yeah. Who's in E.T.? Yeah, we'll just do the clue again. All right. E.T.'s upset. What's yeah. He's looking a bit sad and that. What's, what's what, up with him? What, E.T. the extraterrestrial? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Right, and his mate, yeah, who's in it, it's called Elliot. Yeah, right, he's upset. What's up with him? Well, he's, he's, he's Missy Elliot. Missy Elliot, what's she got to do with it though? I don't understand. No, it, the way you'd say it, you say, "What's up, E.T.?" and it go, oh, "Missy Elliot." Why missing. would he mention her? I don't understand. Was she? In, was it a thing in the film? Missing. She wasn't even around. Oh, miss missing. Oh, missing Elliot. Oh no. Oh, oh, that makes sense, Carl. But no, 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 she's not no, called no, Missing Elliot. Cryptic, it's meant to be about cryptic, rock stars, though, isn't say. it? Miss missing Elliot, isn't it? So it's meant to be about rock stars, yeah, isn't it? Though? It's just cryptic, though, isn't it? Cryptic clues. And oh that. no, that's not cryptic. So that's the shit. <laughs> you. Right, the third one. Uh, I had a tape, and it had uh, Umpty Dumpty on it, and <laughs> <laughs> I love when he says Umpty Dumpty. Yeah, Umpty it, Dumpty. Icky Dicky Dock and that. Uh, yeah. but, but the tapes, uh, broke. Yeah. That was B.R. Buster Rhymes. Say Bus that again, Bus I don't stop. Sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? Oh, uh, who, who, who's the winner, Steve? No, no, it doesn't, no, do you mean oh, busted? busted? Well, it's kind of like that. <laughs> cryptic. No, no, it's not, no, cryptic doesn't mean change it, so it's not the same. Steve, who's the winner? We've got loads of right answers, so... It's interesting, this email it's system, weird, it? um, it flashes up suspected spam, if it, you know spam is that stuff yeah, that yeah. gets sent around the internet. Yeah. And it flashes that up if it thinks it's, uh, gonna be a spam email, and every time it comes in with a Rockbusters answer, it just says suspected spam. <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> in a way. Um, let's, uh, let's give it to, uh, Catherine Jakeways from uh, Hackney, oh. she's, uh, she's got those Rubbish. Answers. Absolute right. rubbish. You know, talking about, um, your parents listening, Carl, it was in Heat this week, and, uh, they mentioned that he does this thing on Sky, what is it? Uh, it's this thing with Richard Bacon, some programme about watching telly, and yeah. you just talk about what you're watching, mm -hmm. and that. And he was annoyed because he said because his parents are and so he's not doing it. He's not going to turn up because they he mentioned it in Heat. And so his parents might watch? Yeah. Why no, are you worried about that? I don't like him watching stuff, do I? I told you. It dates back to when I did Little Donkey at school. Sure. I don't want people watching me. <laughs> what, that <so> just <laughs> renew us on Little Donkey? What happened? It was just, you know, I was there to play the drums and that, uh, in We Three Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was loving it, you know. I got a bit carried away. How old were you? About 13. Yeah. Right? Really? 
Probably. Yeah. About ten, no, about ten, probably. Yeah. yeah. Six. Go on. Um, between six and Where three. Where old were you? What school were you at? Uh, <laughs> okay, you were playing little yeah. donkey. So, yeah. and, uh, no, 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 no. No, you but must... it was one of them schools where everyone sort of was in the same one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a Manchester school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just what the do one you classroom. Mean? Well, it's like you, what it's... sweeping chimneys in the day, and then one hour of learning. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What school were you at? Was it infants, junior, or secondary? They didn't really do that. It was what? one way. What do you mean? Do you that? did that. They still have to abide by the laws of the land in Manchester. No, but it was a, it was a lot more. Like, like, you had infants, but yeah. you also had, like, the older lot. There's kids there who, when you're in the younger year and that, you'd see kids and talk, you go, is that- Talk English and use terms that people do when they're, they're talking about schooling. I don't even want to talk about this. No, how old were you? What, what oh. I'm thinking, I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight. So you went from thirteen <laughs> to six? Yeah, but like I say, it's hard to remember because- <laughs> Imagine if you were giving evidence <laughs> in a trial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, I can't really narrow it down other than seven years either way. You know, theoretically, yeah. he could get called up for jury service. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're on. White Stripes, hardest button to button on XFM. That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. That Carl, Carl, jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You're, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine it was a really, really important trial. But what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by twelve good of men your and peers? True. Twelve good, good, good men, men and true. true. Yeah. Good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only thing days. I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection. I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rock busters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client, standing trial, is a little gay Chinese fella. And here are some of the tapes. <laughs> yeah. From XFM. What's what was he doing? He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you just you get mean? called up and you have to do- you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not, I normally have Mondays <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't like oh, that. Oh, yeah, or you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, don't get me involved. Cos I got involved once. <laughs> don't get me involved! No. What do you mean you got involved once? <laughs> well, would the- Police and that when I lived in Manchester I saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. It hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah. Because I Snitch. thought, well, I know, <laughs> well that's just it, but I thought I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my ca well. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me. I'm stood there with my underpants on. Right. And, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this. To call up the, uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's being robbed. And they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. And where go, do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's, she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away, so, you know, we'll leave it. And she's like, no, uh, we'll track it down, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, look, I, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some could lads see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. Pushing a car. Yeah. They, they, That's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country, they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. Usually sort of like, in start Manchester. the engine. You can get away a lot faster. <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them. <laughs> exactly. They say, come on lads, don't cheat, don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. Because you don't want to people up, not when you're nicking cars. Because <laughs> you don't. Alright, no, so... You no. Know, yeah. So when it... Uh, late at night? Hold on, they weren't gay. They weren't gay, were they? They what, what, they what, 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 <laughs> they're out late, really. Come on, Carl, so what happened? So, anyway, so look, don't call me back, I'm going out of bed, <laughs> right? I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So, um... That's good, what? So that was that, right? Where are you working? Next thing, right, phone's going. Uh, hello, it's the police again. I said, oh, I told you not to call me. Right? <laughs> no, I told so you not to call me at home. So, um, they said, right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? She's like, oh. So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, me underpants on. Yeah. Right? And the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them. They're shouting up, saying which road and all that. And I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. 
They, well, the, you know the I mean? blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't but they? this is this- don't get involved. Don't get involved. After um, that- that's, that's, Imagine him being on a- some sort of trial where it's like, uh, some sort of mob affair. Yeah, gangland Ima murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkington, listen. <laughs> imagine that. Do you know what the- do you know what witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when, supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia, right, you've done a job for them and they had to give evidence against them, right? Cause all right well, if you're gonna do, I mean, all I do was a two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with Mafia. No, l listen, of course not, no. But let's imagine, imagine you're in the Mafia and, uh, that, that you got caught doing something, but instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, oh, well, I can, I can give you Mr. Big, yeah? So they go, okay, give us Mr. Big and we'll let you off, right? So the police go, right, okay. I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so you say, you okay, well, I'll give you names. They go, right, you get evidence in court, and you go, yeah. They go, right, we'll have to get your way, because you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We'll give you a, a new identity, a new passport. We'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why, wh why have I got to do all that? Cause because they'll bump you off, won't they? They'll because you know it was me. Because you have to give evidence in court. So they go, oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you gotta change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone, yeah? Yeah. D d well look, you just know- no, you're giving them in just to keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in summer or sorts or whatever. It doesn't, how, how it, it doesn't matter, Carl! No, listen! I'm, I'm just- how would the Mafia know that I've said something? Cause you say in court, those are the people, that's- he's Mr. Big, he's Mr. So-and-so, he- he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around though, isn't it? But- So I've no, got to leave this job, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think they might try XFM first. I'd have to- What, I'd, I'd have to bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she can go and live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family though, you can't contact them. You've got to leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what would the new identity be that you'd choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right? Brett so, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you gotta change your surname, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go X directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, no don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen? And and go and live in in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe you know, and they just f forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair. Well, you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear maybe, a wig or yeah. a moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So, so like an afro or something. Something like that. That yeah. would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do all, all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing. Yes. And said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, why can't? Why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court? <laughs> Say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, thanks very much. I go off, I carry on my life. That's still genius. Coming in that is, I don't know why they haven't thought that. Is that is genius. I don't know. That is all the witness protection scheme. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, well, I'll go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro, and I don't like that. Yeah. Right? And then when I come out, I'm back to Carl Pilkington, <laughs> still talking like that, but yeah. without the afro. <laughs> that is well, perfect. You've got- why don't you call the FBI and say, oh, listen, I can save you billions of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. All right. Well done. Or Brett, should I say. Don't look back into the sun, Libertines on XFM. I'm excited, Steve. It's that time. It's that time of the week. Go on. Well, Carl's- in a little film. Oh, that's what you're excited about. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the, the show's almost over. Right? Yeah, no. Come on in, Carl. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took a scene from it. Yeah. Gotta listen carefully in that. Uh, at the end, there'll be a question on, like, the clip that you've just heard, mm -hmm. it's sort of like what they do in the Krypton Factor and stuff. So do you want to read out the prizes? Or just uh, yeah, there's a few things. It's a uh, couple of rock and roll albums. Um, we've got the- Why is it called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Um, I can't remember. I think it's explained in the book. 
but I don't remember. I haven't read it for many years. If someone knows, just a quick email to do. I'd like to know that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself, if you get the question right, the League of Gentlemen, Series 3. We've got that Rock and Roll Legends again, the best of Blondie, a nature program, and the Old Grey Whistle Test. Volume uh, three, so if you're uh, over so fifty, well you'll enjoy that. Yeah, and just uh, if you haven't seen the film, it's just about uh, uh, like a what, what would you call it? Uh, well, it's a guy whose guy thinks he's going to get away with prison by going into a uh, a mental institution. Yeah. It was a new experiment, but he finds out he c can't get out, and he's sort of trapped. And well, people know it; everyone knows what. Just uh, play. Just it. Play. Right, I saw it last week, so just play. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I. Uh, been observing you here now for the last four weeks and I don't see any evidence of mental illness at all. Yeah, no, no, I'm not mental. I never, I never said I was. I mean, all right, I got, I got an E in history, but that isn't why I'm in here. I'm in here because I had to get away from, from the outside world. It was doing me head in. I've been working too hard, I'm stressed out. I've been working like loads of hours Monday to Friday. I've been working on a Saturday with Ricky and Steve, right? That's that's been doing me head in. People don't people think that's a laugh when it isn't. Right? You're busy right now, are you? You got something to do well, it, right now. See, this is why I'm here today, Doctor, because he's doing me head in. What do you mean, sir? Well, well, he's doing me head in. I came here to get away from Ricky. He is just as bad. I was smarter than him, ain't I? You're you're an idiot, right? You just <laughs> ah, we're just good friends. No, we're not friends. And if you were a friend, you wouldn't be doing that to me, Ed. How do you mean that? Well, don't ask. Come on, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, 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 you yes. Get him out. Get him off me! Get him off! Get him off. Now, I got him. You just hold it right there. All right. Will you get off, Doctor? Will you tell him? Come here, Don't hurt you, does he? Of course it does. That's it. I'll hold on to you. Not too hard. You'll crush all the air out of it with him. I normally do. Get off! I normally do it harder than that. No, it's warming up. Warming up. What's going on here? All right, be there. Get off! <laughs> See what I mean, Doctor? That's that's what he's doing every day. The state of this. I don't know why you do it, because it's not as if you're going to crack it open. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, the effort. Yeah. It's almost, uh, I wonder if it's almost a strange premonition of the future. Yeah. You in some kind of home. Alright, well, uh... What's the question? Little question, then. Uh, what result did I get in history? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Alright. Yeah, well, uh... Tricky one, that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Oh, text. Will we take text? Um, I haven't really bothered to check right. the text. All right, then. Email. <coughs> oh. Thanks for that, Rick. Sneezy. Yeah. All right, I'll play, uh... Prinice Brothers, yeah, it's a lovely tune from their album, uh, what's it called? Yours, Mine and Ours. Blinded by the stars. See me like a passion that took such a long... Blinded by the Stars from the Pranice Brothers. We've uh, a couple of uh, texts. I do occasionally have a look at them. Go on. Um, we've had one here complaining. It doesn't say who it's from. It just says, Wow, really clever homophobic material. Genius. Switching off, idiots. Oh, I don't know what they mean. It was not clever homophobic material. <laughs> it, was, it was just homophobic. It well, was... well, what do they mean, though? But how is it homophobic? We weren't being anti-gay. We were saying we don't understand the gay world. And anything that's... We were querying and questioning and, it. Yeah, and Carl... See, this is what I mean. Carl gets us into trouble. I can't go through Chinatown no. anymore. No. It's not really a town, though, is it? It's not really a town. It's, it's more of a best. novelty street. A novelty street with response. Yeah. But I can't, you know, and when we sort of like talk, we get uh, tarred with the same brush as him because yeah. the man's an idiot. Yeah. But we often say that. We're, you know, we are not homophobic. I don't think Carl's homophobic. He's confused. Mm. He's interested. He's got nothing against Chinese people. He's got a little theory that they don't age well. And these are the sort of things that come across. I mean, they're not meant to be homophobic and racist. They're showing that Carl, I don't know the PC term for this, is a bit mental. Yes. And, you know, I think we're doing our bit by letting him on. On the air. On the air as well. Like that complaint he got about that woman on, um, what's it called? Who are you looking at? Yeah. Because he said about. I, I don't even want to repeat it, but he said some, uh, you know, 
Yeah. yeah, but I never meant to upset anyone with that. That's no, I know you didn't. No, I know you didn't. No, but I mean, it's, it's on the website now. And you know, to be fair, she does say it was Carl that said it, and you know, yeah. we were the idiot presenters that let him on it. But it's like uh, Carl is bad for our reputation. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's funny to be in a room with him, but then I want to sort of shake it off. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about Guilty it. Guilty by association. I know. Have you, what have you got to say for yourself, Carl, for the, all the, some of the stuff you come out with? What have you got to say? I mean, I know the answer. It's absolutely from the heart and genuine- Ignorance. <laughs> and confusion and interest. You, you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. Well. Well. Towards but, me, yes, but yeah, other people. But again, he's just honest with you. He says- he well, well, don't repeat what he says. No, <laughs> don't no. Don't repeat it, just leave it. But it's not as bad as to some other things, but he's, you know, he says, remember you just say that you, when you first met him, you look, he looked a bit odd, but you got used to it. Yeah. Now that's from the heart. I said that's like him, sort of like being honest and nice, but he doesn't know what that. And we can take it, of course. Well, what what have you got to say for yourself? I haven't got anything to say really. I mean, <laughs> there's, been, there's been other weird stuff going on in the week and that. Go on. Uh, no, we might as well talk about it next week because we're, we're wrapping up. All I'm saying is I talk about what's gone on. Yeah. Have we got monkey mean? news? Have we left monkey news behind? Monkey news! Come on! What happened? You can't offend monkeys! I'll tell you what is annoying. What? Steve's told me about a film that is about a monkey going off with a woman. Mm. The Charlotte Rampling thing where she. It's a film takes... called Max Monomour. Yeah, she has an affair with a monkey. Go on. Yeah. Oh, what happened? You wouldn't like Don't it. Go, we can't go into you wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's weird and it, you wouldn't, d Carl, it's not like a nature program where he wears a bowler hat and can talk. Okay. The major programs that you <laughs> seem to see. Yes, I'm trying to think I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do monkey news. Well, monkey news this week. Play the um, Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you f- Right, it's about this monkey that was knocking about in the 1950s. Right. Um, just, uh, mm. it was known in the sort of <sighs> LA area, right? Um, and apparently, um, again, I haven't really checked all this out, I've just picked up bits that, that look not. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, wore a golden mask and like a cape and a, a leopard skin belt and stuff, right? So people didn't know but he was, was a monkey. monkey. Of course they didn't know, yeah. He just thought, they thought he was this bloke who's going around and he was helping out crime situations and stuff. <laughs> right, you're an idiot. So one, this disguise, that, that you see a, a, a three foot six bloke with arms the length of his body. No, but that's the funny thing, right? They knew, they sort of thought, it's a bit odd, you know, he's stocky yet extremely flexible. Yeah, and hairy, because he only wore a white mask and a belt. And a distinctive jawline and stuff. And then, uh, right. apparently, like, he used to sort of get to his... Nothing we say gets through, does it? You've, you've, you've decided you can it's picture this monkey going around solving going crimes, and it's... it's... You. Let him finish the story. Time's running Jeez. out. So it sort of get to its crime by, like, swinging from the trees and stuff. Of course stuff, it would, right? yeah. yeah. Well, people just thought, it's a normal fella. Of course. Then what happened was, he... This is the bit that's gonna annoy me, isn't it? He helped some fellas out, like, you know, and for a, rewar for a reward, they were like, do you want some money? You know, you've, you've helped save our lives during a crime and stuff. Mm. Do you want some money in that? And he just went straight for the shopping bags, got a couple of bananas and apples, <laughs> right? And as he was bent down, looking into the bag, getting the bananas and apples, they pulled his mask off, little monkey. So he wasn't allowed to work for the police anymore? It, it ended there. Sure. Weird, isn't it? <sighs> Rick, can I tell you the meaning of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. Can we never speak of monkey news again? Yeah. It comes apparently from an American children's nursery rhyme. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all good children go to heaven. Some fly east, some fly west, some fly over, over the, the cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. nest. Brilliant. Uh, and our thanks to Ian for emailing that in. Uh, shall I give um, someone the prizes? Yeah. Phil Corbett, there you are, that's the first one I've pulled out. He correctly guessed that it was E. It was an E that Carl got in history. The only qualification he's got, and it's an E. Do you know that woman? <laughs> judge, the, judge the monkey news based on that. <laughs> Go on. That woman who went out with a monkey. What? It's a film. It's a film. It was Charlotte Rampling. In the film. I don't know who played the monkey. Did she have any kids? What, with the monkey? In the film? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking if I'm gonna get it out and stuff. No. No. Mm. Why? Oh, cause that would have been interesting. Well no, it's just that. The problem there is, the kids would always look more like the dad. 